Bucks trail by 17. And, and listen, Cleveland were the favorites to win the Central Division last season. High expectations given they finished third in the Central in 2014. But that's just what adding LeBron can do for a team. LeBron and Love are the talented pair at the forward position. Kyrie Irving is out there with Iman Shumper. And it's Mozgov in at the five down low. So that's who's on the floor for the Cavaliers. From deep, Middleton can't get it to go. Cleveland did win the Central, as you alluded to, won 11 in-division games against what was a very tough division. No easy opponents in that Central division last year. Three teams in the playoffs, and one was knocking on the door. The Cavs did what they needed to do to bring home the banner. And guys, for everything we've said about Kyrie Irving over the years, now let's talk about maybe another area, and that is his willingness to give up the ball. LeBron came to town at the beginning of last season. Kyrie didn't even flinch at the prospect of being 1B to 1A. To me, that was a very selfless way of giving the mantle of that team over to LeBron. I agree with you, and there was some question as to whether Kyrie would be able to do that at this point in his career, but ultimately that's what champions do. Kobe did it for Shaq. Robinson did it for Tim Duncan. And that's really what great players do. And he's good on the second. You, and getting back to Kyrie, many felt the addition of LeBron would cut down on Kyrie's playmaking opportunities. But, but Kyrie was near his career average in assists last season. That even further indicates how seamlessly the two superstars were able to judge. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought without any individual agendas. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. Time out. Time out called the Cavaliers. You know, talking about the effect LeBron had on Kyrie last year, they look fantastic working together. But the stat sheet also bared that out. Kyrie hit over 40% of his threes for the first time in his career. And he posted the lowest turnover rate of his career, too. We well, talk about players who don't get a lot of recognition that probably deserve some. For me, Chris Middleton, Clark. He's at the top of the list in that regard for me, too, Kevin. I mean, really a revelation for the Bucks the last couple of years. He's a really good all-around forward who can do everything well. And here in the second half of play, we're just over a minute in. And Middleton has improved every year as well. Added the three-point shot after the rookie season, which made him very tough to deal with offensively. A good board there, Kevin, but overall they're getting slightly out-rebounded. And that's a good place to start if you're going to try to find your way back into this game. Get to work on the glass. And for Middleton... Adding that three-point shot was huge. I mean, not only can he keep teams honest outside, but he hits over 40% of his shots from beyond the arc. And stolen by LeBron. And he makes no mistake on the slam dunk. And that's the classic one-two punch right there. I mean, nice steal. And then how about the elevation, Kevin, on the finish? And, Greg, nothing spurs some quick offense like a great play defensively. That indicates the importance of great on-the-ball defense, as was displayed right there. And we're just around two minutes into the final half of play now. And he's able to get it back. It's good, and he drew contact on the shot, so he will go to the line. A three-point play chance here. That's going to send LeBron James to the line. It's going to be on Michael Carter-Williams. Well, LeBron had kind of a slow start to his season, his return to Cleveland last year. Yeah, he got off to a bit of a slow start. He had some nagging-type injuries, but... 
Things turned around, and LeBron was eventually able to get the clubhouse atmosphere where he wanted. And that atmosphere that LeBron was after, I mean, he described it as wanting a family-like atmosphere. And that one's good. What a smart pass by Carter Williams right there. Cleveland with the ball. They're on a 12-4 run. It's tipped. Parker with the steal. Here's Monroe. And the officials call a traveling violation. They can't take care of the basketball. They're going to have a very hard time turning this game around. True. Their turnovers are piling up in this quarter. Second half of play with just under two and a half minutes gone. And Love has it in the corner. Rebound, Milwaukee. And to touch on the, the Cleveland atmosphere, you know, you could see as the season unfolded, it became a big part of what LeBron was able to accomplish in Miami, starting to work itself into that roster. Looked like he was channeling Bob Cousy right there, since when does he take guys off the dribble like that? And another miss by Cleveland. One made three for him for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. You know, that part of the floor, guys, is more or less his real sweet spot, right in his wheelhouse. Now here's James. He has seven. Shepard, good, and the assist goes to LeBron. LeBron's got his seventh assist of the game with that last one. And, and boy, how good was Chris Middleton last season? I mean, always a deep shooter who could stretch the floor. He hits the weight room in the offseason and became a much stronger defender. Now he's one of the more promising 3 and D guys in the league. And Milwaukee calls their first time out of the game. And for Chris Middleton last season, he went up in points, assists, rebounds, but went down in turnovers. Boy, what an improvement for this young man. A late bloomer. I liked him when he was at Texas A&M, still growing into his body, playing with great confidence, and he can spray that thing from three. I like his promise. Anderson Verajau's checked in for Mozgov. Tristan Thompson comes in for Kevin Love. Smith checked in for Shumpert. And Mo Williams subbed in for Kyrie Irving. Big group substitution here for Milwaukee. Henson's checked in for Monroe. Mayo comes in for Parker. Vasquez, he's checked in for Chris Middleton. And Jared Bayless subbed in for Carter Williams. And, and, and still, I don't know that anyone can define what Giannis's position is. It's kind of still up in the air. I mean, he's played mostly on the wing a season ago, and, and, and thus far, maybe that could end up being the best fit. Prior to last season, Giannis was experimenting with a point guard position for stretches during the summer league. Well, you know, Kevin, he's just the type of guy whose size and length really allow him to guard every position. True. Second free throw, no good. And guys, the Greek freak really improved his numbers across the boards last season. Giannis was up in every measurable category, except three-point percentage. He's really improved his shooting, though, overall. The three ball still eludes him a little bit here and there. Uh, but, but what I like, Kevin, is his aggressiveness. That's what's making the difference in his game right now. Now here's James following the miss by John Henson. Smith, wide open, he fires. Wide open, couldn't capitalize. Here's Bayless. No good. Nice D from Verja. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. You know, going back to Giannis, he has the physical makeup and skill set to be a triple-double guy. I mean, there's no reason that he shouldn't be able to fulfill his potential, except consistency. That's the area he's got to tighten up. And here is Ana de Kumbo. Maurice Williams letting it go from three. From deep. Milwaukee, no good that time either. And just because you can make it from outside doesn't mean you need to live there. Not that far out anyway, Greg. I mean, he can work for a better shot than that. 
Misses from short range. The Bucks have gone four of nine from the floor so far in the third. Here's Mayo. No good again that time. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on him. Count that one. Nine points for LeBron. And he could be the guy to put this game out of reach. Milwaukee has gotten blank from three-point land so far in the third. Still 0 for 3. And the foul on John Henson. That is his first foul of the game. Yeah, way to get there first and be willing to absorb the contact. No question about it. No flop there. That was a direct shot to the chest. Jefferson kicks to Thompson, and he bangs it home with one hand. The one-hand slam is so sweet when it's his hand doing the slam. Oh, yeah, he is so smooth, even on a power finish like that. And really, that's what makes him unique, that combination of power and polish. Again with the fourth quarter might not come down to the wire, but you never know. 